today I'm going to be doing a video on lenses. So just like we have two different types of mirrors, we have a concave mirror and we have a convex mirror, we're going to be talking about two different types of lenses. A converging lens, which is shaped like this, and then a diverging lens, which is shaped like that. If you can see, my glasses are thinner in the middle and thicker on the outside. Those are diverging lenses. We're going to start with the easiest one. And the nice thing about lenses is that it's exactly the same stuff as mirrors, except that the light goes through a lens instead of getting bounced back. We use the same three rays. We use the same equations. So there's not a lot that's new with lenses. You should be able to pick it up pretty quick if you've already picked up the mirrors stuff. So I've got a setup here. And with lenses, because there's curvatures on both sides, we actually have a focal point on both sides. And it's equal on both sides. So this is, I've set it up as 15 centimeter focal length, and that's on both sides. So we have two focals. And in order to figure out where the image is here, we're going to do ray tracing. And we're going to do pretty much the same three rays we had before. If you remember, we have a light ray that goes out parallel to the axis. And then with a mirror, it went down and it threw, or bounced back and went through the focal. But now this is a lens, so the light's going through. So this one is going to go through uh, the far focal. Uh, I can do this right, yeah. So there's a light ray that comes in parallel to the axis and goes through the far focal. And remember that this is one of the definitions of a focal point. Parallel light coming in all gets focused down to this point. So any parallel light ray coming in is going to go through that point. The second ray uses the other definition of the focal point, where if we have a light ray that starts at the focal point or goes through the focal point, then it's going to leave going out parallel. So our second ray is one that goes through the closer focal. Start at our object, go through the closer focal, and then as soon as it hits that center line, we have it going out parallel. Eh, something like that. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> but again, we need a third ray. And I really want to see that third ray on everything because it's the way we keep up with making sure that our ray diagram is precise. I mean, sure, two lines do converge, but how good is that? I don't know. That's why we use the third ray. Now for mirrors, we had used the center of curvature, which was two times the focal length. This, we're going to be able to do something a little bit easier. Instead of using the center of curvature, can you guess what center we're going to use? We're going to use the center of the lens. We're going to go through the point where the horizontal and vertical axes meet. So we're going to go right through that point there. All right, let's see if I can get this one. Let's see how well it lines up. Always hard on a board with no mirror. I'm sorry, no grid. Okay, so we're going right through that center point and then we keep going. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, I can live with that. So our three light rays more or less meet up around here. I would say that the image is formed about here. So here's our object. And the light rays go through the lens and they converge, because this is a converging lens, they converge right here. The light is actually meeting here. If you were to put a piece of paper here, you would see an image on the paper, which means it is a real image. So this is a real image from a converging lens because the light actually meets up here. With a real image, we can say that we should have a positive image distance. So we don't have to do any back tracing. It's a real image. The light is actually here. That's going to give us a positive image distance. We always have a positive object distance to start. And with a converging focal, a uh, converging lens, where the light rays, par parallel light rays coming through, would all actually meet here, we're going to have a positive focal length. So we have positive DO, positive DI, positive F for this real image with a converging lens. We can do the exact same math that we had for mirrors. So I'm going to use my 1 over DO plus 1 over DI 
equals 1 over f. And I'm going to calculate what my image distance should be, and then I'm going to measure it. Same thing we've been doing. Calculate it, measure it. My focal was 15 centimeters. What is my DO? I need more than that. All right, my object distance is 32. So if we grab a calculator and use this formula, 1 divided by 1 divided by the focal minus 1 divided by DO, I get an image distance calculated of positive 28 centimeters. All right, let's measure it. Let's see how close we got. So from the line, oh, yeah, 28 centimeters. I might call it 29, but, you know, there's, there's some free play there. Okay, I'll, I'll be good. I'll call it 29. So my image distance is at 29 centimeters from the center of the lens. Just like with mirrors, we don't go to this curvature line because if we did that, we'd have to be precise on how we drew the curve. We just go straight to this, this center line. So we change the direction of the rays at the center line, and we make our measurements to the center line. We can do our next step, which is our magnification. It is minus di over do. In this case, di, I tend to use the calculated. If you use your measured, you should get about the same number. So minus 28 over do, 32. M is negative 28 over 32, negative 0.88. And now we can stop and say, what does that mean? Well, M is negative. The negative tells me that the image is inverted. So if my object's above the axis, my image should be below. Good. And the 0.88, the magnification is less than 1, which means my image should be smaller than my object. And let's find out what we've got. HO is not measured yet. So I can calculate HI, and I can measure HI. OK, so how tall is this thing? The height is about 15. Interesting. 15 centimeters. And it's positive because it's above the axis. HI calculated, that's magnification times HO, negative 0.88 times 15. I get a negative 13 centimeters. Let's measure it and see how we did. So the measurement from the axis to the image. Um, I get it 14. So I have measured at 14 centimeters. It's below the axis, so it's negative. All right, so here we've done exactly the same things that we've been doing with the mirrors. We've just been doing it with a converging lens. Same three rays. We just have to keep track of which focal to use, I guess. So out, it, if we have a light ray that goes out parallel, it's going to go through the focal. We have a light ray that goes through the focal, it means it's going out parallel. And then the easy one, right through the center. Creates an image here. All three rays are actually here. Real image. Positive DI. We can go through the exact same math. And things are matching up pretty close. My calculated heights of the image are very, very close. And my calculated distances for the image, really close. So there's a basic problem for a converging lens. Converging lens shaped like this, where we have a real image formed. You can probably guess that we have two more types of image formation. So with a converging lens, we can also get a virtual image. And then converging lens, nope, the other one, diverging lens, we can also get an image. So those will be the next videos. But for now, here is a real image converging lens. Good job.